it's Scott Orn at Cruise Consulting. And today we're talking about should your startup use convertible debt, safe notes, or preferred stock to do a fundraise. And so the basic kind of uh, trade-off you're making when you raise money as a founder is you're giving someone ownership in your company uh, via a lot of expensive legal paperwork and you're getting cash in the door, right? And so picking security that you're giving the investors, whether that's the preferred stock, the safe note, the control debt, is actually kind of important. You wanna be thoughtful about this and make a good decision. So I've done videos explaining what convertible debt is, what safe notes are, what preferred equity is uh, or are. Um, so check those videos out, but I'm gonna kind of give you the cliff notes reasons why certain parties actually like different types of security. So. For preferred equity, that is a favorite of venture capitalists. And it kind of makes sense. Like they're professional investors, they're doing this all day long and they are fiduciaries. Like they are managing other people's money, foundations, you know, other types of academic institutions, pension funds, like they have to be responsible and show they're actually being careful to those institutions. So they like preferred equity because it's very clearly defined it's clearly uh, negotiated. There's a law firm involved, uh, very buttoned up. And so the price per share in preferred equity is defined. Like, you know, you're, pay you're getting, you're paying a dollar a share. And when you add up all the shares in the company, you times that by a dollar and that's the valuation of the company, right? Very, very clear. There's no conversion feature to be had later, uh, which is the case with safe notes and control notes, which I'll talk about in a second. It's plain as day what you're paying and what the valuation of the company is at the time of the deal. Uh, it also starts the QSBS uh, clock immediately. Uh, QSBS is frankly a tax shelter uh, or a way of mitigating your capital gains taxes down the line if the startup uh, qualifies. And there's, I think, I think there's like kind of five main qualifications. I've done that in another video. You can check that out. But QSBS can save up to $10 million or I think it's 15 X. Don't quote me on that, uh, of whatever the investors, uh, base is, uh, shelter that from capital gains taxes. So it's actually pretty important to a lot of investors. Uh, so it starts the clock immediately when you buy debt, you're not really owning the company. And so that doesn't really start the clock and safe notes are kind of this gray area, um, which I've done a video on, um, uh, most safe note documentation these days will include some type of reference saying like, this is, this is to be understood as taking common stock and it should start the QSBS clock immediately. But guess what? The IRS hasn't clarified whether that actually works or not. So we're all going to find out in a couple of years because <laughs> safe notes have been popular for a while. Uh, whether the IRS actually recognizes that as the date of the clock starting. So that'll be a fun little surprise. Uh, and I'll definitely do videos on that whenever they come out with a ruling. Uh, but next up, uh, the reason why investors like uh, prefer stock is there's a liquidation preference, typically 1x, but very clearly defined. And that means that they get their money back, their invested capital back before the common stock starts to participate. Now, preferred equity can always be converted into common later on. And that's what happens when a company does an IPO. The night before the IPO, uh, when it starts trading on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, all the investors typically will convert over, assuming it makes sense economically for them. They'll convert over to common stock. Um, but they don't want to do that till the last minute because they give up their liquidation preference. And again, they like preferred stock because there is a line item in that stock purchase agreement explaining that to the founders that they have a liquidation preference. Very powerful. Um, helps them take a little bit more risk sometimes too, which is kind of nice. Good for the founder. Um, preferred equity also typically comes with board seats. Now, not everyone who's an investor in the round gets a board seat, but typically the lead investor in the round gets that board seat, maybe two board seats sometimes. And so they can help kind of control the company that way as well. That's in preferred equity. Another thing in preferred equity is there's typically like some provisions that allow them to block a sale of the company um, if they don't agree with it. Like the worst thing is if you put money into a company as an investor and all of a sudden the founders are turning around and selling at a discount, right? You could actually lose a lot of money that way. Again, you are fiduciary for your investors. And so you want that blocking right if possible. Um, 
those are kind of the big things. Um, also, a downside of preferred equity is that it's typically more expensive to document, like more things to negotiate, more legal expenses. It's one of the reasons why safes and convertible debt are a lot more popular. So I hope that helps kind of covering why investors like preferred equity so much. So let's talk about safe notes and convertible notes. They're actually pretty similar. It used to be that everyone used convertible notes and then Y Combinator worked with a couple of law firms and came up with safe notes, which are more of a fan, uh, founder friendly uh, convertible security. Um, but for these purposes, I'm just going to kind of bunch them in. It's not going to matter a whole lot whether you as a founder use a convertible note or safe note. The only big material difference is that convertible debt is redeemable, typically kind of like, you know, every 20, 24 months, sometimes even 36 months. Safe notes are not really typically redeemable. Like the the, the company doesn't have to give the, the money back because it's not debt. Now, practically speaking, most convertible note investors will just sign up and to roll the note over. But you do kind of sometimes find yourself in a hard place with maybe an investor who owns a note and is trying to play hardball with you. That was one of the main reasons that safe notes were invented. So that is material different. To, together though, they share a couple key themes. The first one is there's that convert feature that's out in the future. So you typically negotiate what's called a cap, which is a proxy for the valuation. So you might put in $2 million um, in an angel or seed deal at a $10 million cap. That means if the company raises more money later and they do it at a, at a valuation above the cap, so say like $50 million to make the math easy. Well, guess what? You get your shares at a $10 million valuation. You had an incentive to invest early. You got a cap that was lower than what the future valuation would be. And it worked out for you. And that works for the founders because they got the capital they needed at the time where they probably didn't have a lot to show for it. So the cap is kind of a proxy for valuation. This is all finalized later when another round, typically a preferred round comes in and there's a clear valuation. The cap is probably the most important term in a safe note and convertible debt. Um, again, safe notes, convertible debt, much, much faster and cheaper to negotiate. They're usually like a two or three page document. Um, a, a preferred document can be, you know, very significantly longer, 20, 30 pages, something like that. Um, and so that's why founders like them because they're easy. Send them over. Someone signs it, wires you the money. Don't forget to reconcile that cap table um, and you are good to go. Um, there's one caveat with safe notes and control notes, which is sometimes founders are so persuasive or the idea is so hot or the company has so much traction that they can actually negotiate an uncapped note with the investors. What that basically means is that conversion feature I was talking about exists, but there's no preset valuation. That means that it's going to convert at whatever the next round is. Remember that example where they got to convert at 10 million, even though the most recent valuation was 50 million. Well, guess what? In an uncapped note situation, you are converting at that $50 million number. So you can see there's a 5X, de 5x delta in my example. So this is why investors do not really like uncapped notes. You'll actually find a lot of investors just refuse to do them. The investors that do them, and I've even done a few myself as, a, as an angel investor, you kind of just talk yourself into it and you hope that the round's going to come together in the next couple of months and not like a year from now when the company's made a tremendous amount of progress. In a way, uncapped notes, you're kind of penalizing yourself as an investor. You're giving the company money. They're building a lot of value on your money, and then you're getting the price of the next investor. Not too cool, but hey, this is capitalism. This is startup investing. It's the ultimate capitalism, and a company is worth what people will pay for it at the time. And so I can't blame founders for wanting to do uncapped notes. Just be careful. Sometimes I see founders be a little too aggressive. Maybe they haven't raised money before, and they think they're going to get uncapped notes or they ask for uncapped notes, and they can scare off an investor who would have been a great uh, participant in the company, help them build a ton of value, probably brought in extra capital. And that person was scared off because they didn't want to invest in an uncapped note. So be careful what signals you're sending to investors by what you ask for. 
Um, there's also one downside of this conversion feature. It seems great, but I consistently find that entrepreneurs, founders don't quite understand exactly how much of the company they are giving away because the conversion features happen later and depend on the valuation. Um, it's a lot easier if you can just stare at a cap table and you can see exactly who owns what. And that's kind of the argument for preferred financings. Convertibles, you've got some hypothetical situations and people are investing at different caps. This happens quite a bit. Might start The round might start at a $10 million cap then go some other investors put in money at 15 and then someone late puts money at 25. It's hard to keep all those dilution events um, in sync in your head. And it's also kind of hard to frankly model it out. There are tools like cap table manager software that can help you model it. But even those are a little tricky when there's multiple notes or sorry, safe notes can roll debt interacting with each other. Cause it's kind of like a circular calculation. If anyone's ever done a lot of Excel circular calculations can be a little maddening. So safe notes can roll debt are not perfect. There's some downsides with them too. Generally, I recommend early stage companies uh, do the safe or converts because they're cheap, they're fast and easy. You can kind of get them done quickly. But if you're raising a material amount of money, like a lot of money, I would always go for a preferred round. It's just easier to get it documented correctly. You know exactly what you've given up. The investors know what they own. The rights and provisions are all spelled out. And I kind of find with like kind of anything in life, clarity and everyone knowing where they sit and it kind of influences how they act. People tend to be more engaged when they understand exactly what they own in the company. There's no misunderstandings. There's no kind of like um, anything filling a vacuum or a power grab or things like that. It's very kind of, kind of defined. So I hope that helps and check out our other videos on safe notes, converts, uh, preferred equity. And uh, if you have any questions, hit us up at cruiseconsulting.com. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.